Hi everyone, I am Arun Jokar. Today's topic is Leontief Input Output Model Part 2. In Part 1, we had discussed how to find gross output when the forecast demand is given to us. In Part 2, we will talk about Hawking Salmon conditions, equivalent prices, total value added, and the total labor days required. Hawking Salmon condition for the viability of the system. Hawking Salmons provide Two conditions which ensure that system does not have negative output. First, determinants of I minus A of the Leonte matrix must be positive and the diagonal elements 1 minus A11, 1 minus A22 and so on 1 minus ANN of the Leonte matrix should be positive. Or in other words, we can say that A11, A22, A33 and so on should be less than 1. Remember that if AII greater than 1 for some i. What do you mean by that? One or more units of the iron industry would be required to produce one unit of itself. Now we'll talk about what are the different formulas used in Leontief input output model. If input output matrix is A, A11, A12, A21, A22, gross output which is denoted by x equals to x1, x2, final demand D1, D2, and the labor days required L. L1, L2 and which is rates are W rupees per day. Then first point gross output which equals to I minus A whole inverse multiplied by D. Second total labor days required output transpose multiplied by labor days required. This is X1, X2 multiplied by L1, L2. Next equilibrium prices which is denoted by P1, P2. It is equals to I minus A inverse whole transpose multiplied by L1 W L2 W and total value added equals to again output transfer which is X1 X2 multiplied by L1 W into L2 W. Now Leontief input output model will be explained by one example. If input output matrix of a two sector economy is given by A 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 final demand of the two sectors are 15 and 20 respectively. 0.5 and 0.4 labor days are required to produce a unit of two sectors respectively and the business rate 300 rupees per day. Fine. First, gross demand to meet the final demand and also test Hawkins Simon condition. Second, find total labor days required. Third, equilibrium prices and the last, total value added. The input output matrix is given capital A equals to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.2. Let x denote output which is equal to x1, x2 be the gross output to meet the final demand which where final demand is 15 and 20, labor days 0 0.5 and 0 0.4 and which is data rupees 300. First point, well, first of all you want to calculate gross output. So we calculate i minus a. i is identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. A is the input output matrix is given 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 and after calculating I minus will get 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 and 0 0.8. Gross output is I minus A whole inverse multiplied by D. First we calculate I minus A inverse and D is 50 and 20. And after solving we will get the gross output which is denoted by X1 and X2 equals to 58.06 and 46.77. Next, to test Hawking Salmon condition, first we calculate determinants of I minus A, which equals to 0.31, which is positive, and the each entry of the main diagonal of the matrix A is less than 1. Hence, our Hawking Salmon conditions are satisfied. Next, we calculate total labor days required which equals to transpose of output multiplied by L1 L2 and we will get answer 47.738. Next point equilibrium prices which is denoted by P1 and P2 and the formula to calculate equilibrium prices is I minus A inverse whole transpose multiplied by L1 W L2 W. We know inverse of I minus A take transpose of it and put the value of L1 and L2 which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.4 and the W is 300. 
and after calculation we will get equilibrium prices 503.23 and 338.75 now total value added which is equals to transpose of gross output multiplied by L1W L2W gross output is 58.06 and 46.77 and put the value of L1, L2, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 and W 300 and after calculation we will get total value added 14,321.4